it gets incredibly lonely where sometimes you start to consider or believe that you have lost all connection with life itself, with those around you, which itself feeds the negative cycle of depression. AFL Premiership player Wayne Swass fought a silent battle with depression for 15 years before he eventually sought help. I feel obligated that I need to speak and continue to speak about the issue because there are so many people in our community and around our country that are grappling with this issue and they deserve the support and treatment that I was fortunate enough to receive. It's, it's a really difficult one to actually um, comprehend depression. I suppose until you walk in someone else's shoes, you don't really know it. Carlton High Performance Manager David Butterfant lost his son Nick at the age of 20. It's hard to understand why he would take his life, so we're not going down that angle of trying to comprehend why he took his life. We see it as an illness. And once we accepted that, we've gone to path of, like, OK, let's celebrate his life. And then for us, we have a responsibility to ourselves and to each other to move forward. Nathan Thompson's announcement in May 2004 was the first time an AFL footballer publicly revealed mental health issues. You've got to accept what's happening and you've got to be honest and then you've got to learn to be honest with everyone around you and, and don't be afraid to, to share what's going on in your life. Your family and your friends will always be there for you. When you're honest with them, they'll certainly support you. Former Swans leading goal kicker John Sudoltz told no one about his depression while he struggled with life on the farm. Blokes can talk about the footy, the good looking bird that's serving the beer behind the bar, but blokes aren't very good at talking about the things that really count in life. It's okay to talk, you know, it's okay to talk about your problems. You know, I think one of the things we think that, okay, you need, you need to be stoic and not talk about it. I'd like to think in some small way, I'm contributing to a vital conversation around mental illness for so many thousands of people in this country who are grappling with the same things that I grappled with. This is such a big topic in our country that needs to be brought into mainstream discussion. They are telling their stories to help the two million Australians who are struggling with mental health issues. In the end, I suppose it was a choice. You know, I had a choice to make. Did I want to go away and hide away? And to be honest, I. I really don't know where I'd be if I hadn't made the, the choice right then and there that I was going to do everything possible to, to get myself healthy again. Don't let it get as bad as what I was. If you feel that you're struggling with uh, mental health, for goodness sake, talk to your wife, your girlfriend, your mate, go to your GP. Through this whole thing, I, I certainly have learned a lot more about myself um, and the one thing I was able to come out of the other side is really understanding the person that I want to be and the person that I want to be proud of. I think what people living with mental illnesses need in this country today, now, moving forward, to be respected as valuable human beings who contribute significantly to our country and our community without judgment, without stigma. We need to bring these people in, wrap our arms around them and let them know that it's perfectly treatable, that it's acceptable and they're not any different to anybody else dealing with another medical condition. If you or your mate is having a tough time, visit mantherapy.org.au and take action against depression and anxiety.